Good morning uh, and welcome to St Nicholas Methodist Church online service for today, the 1st of November. Today our time of worship together will be slightly different. Um, I'm not here, you see. I'm away on leave, so I'm recording this ahead of time. And the whole service is geared around prayer, praying to God in, faithfully and exploring what it means to come before the Lord. So there will be singing and there will be prayers throughout this service. May God bless us as we come before him, as we ask, seek and knock. Amen. When you pray, go into your room and close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. When you pray, use no vain repetitions as the heathen, for they think to be heard for their much babbling. When you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you 
and pray for them which hurt you and persecute you. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. If you can, believe. All things are possible to him who believes. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Have faith in God. Take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Take heed to yourselves, lest your heart be weighed down with caressing, drunkenness, and cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly, for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind.
One of my favorite viral videos is of a violinist performing a solo piece in concert. The audience sits enraptured as the performance reaches its majestic crescendo, and then someone's cell phone thoughtlessly breaks the spell. We've all been there, but what this maestro does with the interruption is amazing. So, the way this maestro graciously incorporates the harsh music of that cell phone into his performance provides us with a helpful starting point, I think, for understanding Christian prayer and the mediation of Christ. Now, it's a basic axiom of the Christian life that Jesus Christ acts on our behalf as our great High Priest in Heaven, interceding for us before the Father. Our prayers always come to God in, through, and with the prayers of our Mediator, the God-Man, Jesus Christ. We see this principle at work in some fascinating ways in the New Testament. Take the well-known Lord's Prayer, for instance. The disciples see Jesus praying, and they ask him to teach them to pray. And the prayer he taught them goes like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, but towards the end of the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus himself is praying in a garden called Gethsemane. It's right before his crucifixion, and Matthew says that Jesus prayed, My Father, if it is not possible for this cup to pass from me, then thy will be done. Right before his obedience death on the cross, in other words, Jesus himself prayed perfectly the prayer he taught his disciples to pray, that the Father's will would be done. Well, we see the same kind of thing happening in Mark's gospel from the other direction. In Mark's Gethsemane, Jesus prays these words, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Now, the word Abba is an Aramaic term for father, one that expresses a special kind of intimacy. But in another place in the New Testament, it's talking about our life with God, and it says this, We are all children of God who have received the spirit of sonship, and by that spirit, we cry out, Abba, Father. In other words, by the Holy Spirit, our prayers become part of the one beautiful, trusting Abba Father prayer that Jesus himself prayed in Gethsemane. You see, when Christians pray, our prayers are united with Jesus' own prayers to the Father. He gathers them all up into himself, perfects them in his own self-giving, and then offers them for us in his one glorious prayer, Abba Father, thy will be done. But what does this actually look like? If Jesus prays for us, then does the actual content of our individual prayers mean anything? Well, imagine a violinist performing in the great concert hall that is heaven. His music is sweeping and rapturous, and as he performs, sometimes well-meaning, sometimes thoughtless, but never especially musical ringtones break the moment. To the extent that we never know how to pray as we ought to, and even when we try, our humanness always gets in the way, in that sense, our prayers are like those garish ringtones. The difference, of course, is that rather than seeing these ringtones as a thoughtless interruption, this maestro joyfully welcomes them, because he is the consummate artist, and he is able not just to transform them into music, but to weave them seamlessly, effortlessly, and joyfully into his performance so that they thrill the audience and without ever losing their original quality, sound as if they always belong. This is what Jesus does with our prayers, as faltering and imperfect as they always are. He gathers them up into his own self-giving to the Father in heaven, uniting them with his own perfect prayer. And in this way, our prayers become part of his glorious masterpiece. Yes, Abba Father, yes, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven.
I often find having a cross as the focus of my prayers so helpful. In actual fact, if you look, really look I mean, on your daily journey you can find the symbol of the cross in so many different places and forms. And when I find that sacred symbol in the most mundane of places, I'm reminded of the words of St Paul. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved. It is the power of God. Seeing Christ in the world, the Christ of Golgotha, the Christ of the empty tomb, and the Emmaus Christ who walks beside even when I am unaware of his presence, is surely the essence of prayer. The symbol and sign of the cross has always been a central part of Christian prayer and praise. Take these wall paintings, recreated as part of the reconstruction of the medieval St. Tylo's Church at St. Fagan's Country Museum near Cardiff. Or this more modern representation I discovered in the Cotswolds at Tewkesbury Abbey. I also discovered a graffiti cross there too. Can you see where it's been sprayed? Yes, on a recycling bin. Now there's a piece of street theology. Through the cross of Christ, the rubbish of our lives is gathered and recreated into something beautiful. What a wonderful picture. Sometimes you have to really look carefully for the cross in the things around you. Take this discarded branch, an unlikely basis from the cross, you might think. It by the eye and skill of Professor Albin Morador from Meyerhof in the Tyrol, it was made into a thing of sad beauty and later presented to Pope Francis in Rome. Next week, people from around the nation will concentrate upon the cross of remembrance and that remembering is too a prayer. I recall the words of the dying thief who said, when you get into your kingdom, remember me. Robert Bell, writer and former pastor of Mars Church in the USA, says our tendency in the midst of suffering is to turn on God, to get angry and bitter and shake our fist at the sky and say, God, you don't know what it's like. You don't understand. You have no idea what I'm going through. You don't have a clue how much this hurts. 
The cross is God's way of taking away all our accusations, our excuses and our arguments. The cross is God taking flesh and blood and saying, Me too. So let us pray. Lord, when we feel sorry for ourselves and think we have sacrificed so much for others, remind us of what you did for us on the cross. Lord, when our patience wears thin and we are ready to give up, speak to us through the example of your endurance on the cross. Lord, when we get angry and feel like fighting back against those who would be our enemies, help us remember your words to your enemies from the cross. Father, forgive. Lord, Whenever we suffer in any way, keep us near the cross. Lord, when we are afraid to stand up for what is honourable, strengthen us with the courage with which you went to the cross. Lord, when we come to the time of death, uphold us with the assurance that life did not end for you on the cross. Fill us with hope of the resurrection and new life, which your cross continues to teach us each day. Amen. Thank you.
And so as you journey on this week, may you do so in constant prayer, praying from your heart, even when words fail you. And I just pray that the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one of you today and forevermore. Amen.